Gioacchino Greco. What do we know about him? He was Italian. He lived in the early 1600s, and he's the first chess player to have recorded many of his games a long time ago. He has over 80 games that are over 400 years old. Finally, we never knew his opponents, but we do know this. He is the first player to ever have recorded a Greek gift, which is a famous chess sacrifice in which white gives a bishop to open up the opponent's king. King takes, and now knight g5 check, opening up the queen to go to h5. In this position, his opponent took, but you can go with king g8 here, in which just queen h5 follows, threatening checkmate, and if you take my knight, I take back, and now I'm threatening checkmate two different ways. Also, you can go to g6, but there's different ways that white can absolutely assassinate you if you're not careful. Notably, let's say queen d3 check, f5 would be played, e takes f6, en passant, discovered check on this king, king takes, and then we have queen f3 check. The king has to go back, this is pretty forced, and then we have h5, king h8, h6, and then we have at least winning a queen by discovered check. But in his game, his opponent took on g5, h takes g5, discovered check on the king, king moves back, if you move forward, it looks like it's gonna be checkmate, the king has to move forward again. Ooh, do we have g6, the king goes here? No, we have queen h3 check. King back to g6, if you go to e4, we have checkmate here on d3. So the king goes back to g6, and now we have queen h7 checkmate. In the game, the king went back to g8, then we have queen h5 threatening checkmate two ways, f5 liberating some air for the king, and now g6 trapping the king in its fortress. And now, nothing can stop checkmate in one, his opponent played whatever, and then it's checkmate in one move for Greco. He invented also this trap in the fried liver in which white threatens this f7 pawn, d5, e takes. It's really bad to take with the knight here. Now, theory, we know this, that knight a5 is the proper move, but his opponent took, and Greco is the first guy to find this brilliant move. This, by the way, still holds till this day. And after king takes, because this is a fork on two pieces, it's a sacrifice too, the king can take. Now we have queen f3 check. And this check reinforces an attack on this knight while checking the king, forcing the king to march forward and contribute to the defense of this knight. Now knight c3, attacking the knight more, knight e7 to defend, and castles. Today, I think a little bit better is d4 or even queen e4, but castles c6 and now rook e1, bishop d7, d4 attacking this pawn. The king tries to escape to c7 and b8, but now we have rook takes e5, and despite the knight g6 attacking the rook, we have knight takes d5. <laughs> Greco is a crazy one, sacrificing the exchange, and you know, you can take the knight as well, but the exchange is more favorable taking back, and here the king has very limited choices. If the king goes to e6, now we have knight c7, double check on this king, the king must go back, and now we have checkmate, and if you take, well then it's checkmate again. So Greco's opponent went to c5, and now we have queen a3 check. King takes c4, and now queen d3 check. Forcing this king up, these are all forced moves, king up, and now the beautiful Pawn checkmate, b4 checkmate, what an astounding checkmate. He also invented the sacrifice against the Damiano defense, which is this poor f6 move. This is a known and forced win for the white pieces. Knight takes e5. He invented this. He invented all of this. f takes, if you don't want to just lose a pawn in the center. Queen h5 check on the king. King has to move up, or g6 would give up the rook with a forced fork here, so king e7, and now we have a known win, forced all the way, which he found, queen takes e5, king f7, bishop c4 check, you could play d5, but then you would run into some things in which it's still forced, you would still just give a queen as the black pieces, not too good, instead, the opponent goes for the more nicer variation of this, which is king g6, the forced king move on the board, queen f5 check, king h6, discovered check with d4, g5 to cover, h4 to threaten a discovered double check on this king. The king goes early to g7, and now we just have the forced reverse move order checkmate, queen f7 check, king 
back to h6, and then h takes g5, checkmate. He has the first recorded game of a common trap in the Italian after just taking on e5, or this can happen in any pretty much opening involving like an open d file and a bishop on c4. After takes, there's just queen d5, threatening this knight and the checkmate. This is a pretty common trap. He invented this. He also invented the fishing pole trap. He didn't invent the name, but he invented the trap itself. The fishing pole trap is very simple. This is the fishing rod and this is the bait. If you take the bait, then my fishing rod can get the fish <laughs> and then I would open up the h file and it's pretty much over and his opponent took the bait we take back on g5 and we're threatening queen h5 with some mates here once this knight gives up this h5 square we have queen h5 threatening checkmate here and you can't really get some air like we saw in a couple of games ago because now the pawn is pinned and if you try to escape with your rook well then I'll just have check king here, and then check, king takes, and checkmate on h5. Additionally, Greco has the first known Queen's Gambit accepted game trap. Here he plays e3, attacking this pawn, and this is why you shouldn't accept the Queen's Gambit if you don't know what you're doing, because if you defend, and then you continuously defend this pawn here, there is a takes b5, c takes b5, and oh no, Queen f3. And now this rook is trapped and black has to give up a piece if they don't want to lose that full rook. And this is completely winning for the white pieces after only six moves. Greco was also a fan of very creative queen traps in which he would trap his queen and that would be the end of the game. He won a lot of his games like this. In this game, he played knight c3, sacking a knight and after takes knight d5, attacking this queen, queen moves. And then we take on e5, takes back and takes back. Now. Black can't really take here because then we would take back the queen, knight takes, and then we would take this pawn, forking these two pieces and winning the rook. So the black pieces just move their queen and now we have bishop b5. Beautiful. Here the bishop looks free. If you take the bishop with the black pieces, you run into a triple royal fork and lose your queen. So the black pieces don't really have more many options, could just like play away, but plays queen c5. And now Greco finds a really genius piece of work, bishop e3. And this is genius, again, another brilliant move, because you're sacking this bishop and you are trapping this queen effective immediately. The queen is trapped, but the only free square to go to is this trapped square on b5. Can't go to b6, can't go to b4, can't go to c3, can't go to e7, can't take this. And so his opponent finally has to take the bishop going into this royal fork, delayed. And then we take the queen and this, uh, this was actually resigned after knight takes b5. Another queen trap is when his opponent took here on g3, h takes g3, and the innocent queen's g4 falls to bishop takes f7. This is an attraction tactic. If the king takes, then we have knight e5, check on the king, and winning this queen called a royal fork. So the king would have to move and now rook h4 seals the game because the queen has no squares. The queen cannot take this e4 pawn because the rook defends it. The queen can't go to f5, can't go to e6, can't go to g6, can't go to g5, can't go anywhere. It's absolutely crazy. I found this one cute as well because he's rarely with the black pieces in all of his recorded games. Maybe like five out of his 80 recorded games are with the black pieces. So this was fun. Knight h6, knight takes g4, queen h4 check. The opponent recovers with knight f2 and now we have d5, a discovered attack after which the bishop takes on d5 is a huge blunder, not securing bishop e2 anymore, and now we have bishop g4, defended by the knight very importantly, but most important is this knight being pinned, which traps this queen on d1. In this game, another queen trap, he develops a very large pawn structure with the white pieces, the knight moves, and a few moves later you'll see that now white plays their knight five times in a row to trap the queen. This is called the knight's journey. I just made that up on the spot. Knight d2, knight e4, knight d6, knight f5, and this queen is trapped on h4. Beautiful. My favorite of his queen sacks is when Greco played g3 here, queen h3, and now the queen is suddenly a little bit more trapped than before, and on g2 even more trapped than then. Now king e3, the king attack is going. Knight g8 and now knight f4 that really traps the queen while taking out the escape square which is h3. Black has a really nice resource here which they find which is bishop h6 pinning this knight 
to this king. And now Greco says, call the ambulance, call the ambulance, but not for me, bishop f1. Brilliant move, sacrificing this rook on h1. And if not for that, this queen is trapped. So the queen needs to take the rook on h1. And now we have discovered check. The bishop goes back out, bishop b5, check on the king and winning this queen next move. And although it is a bishop and a rook for a queen and a pawn, here white was sufficiently winning and the black pieces resigned. I don't think they knew what compensation was back in the 1600s. And finally for queen traps, haven't we all been in this or played this? Here black opens up with d5, one of Greco's few games with black. Uh, d3, h6, and then d4, and then oops, knight g3, bishop g4, and the queen is strapped. GG's, hand over the money, let's play. Greco was also a fantastic player when it came to mating nets. In this position with the white pieces, he played knight f4, and then knight takes g6, sacrificing the knight. If you take, I'll take back, and then zoom on g8 with checkmate. So, knight e6, knight e7, double check on this king. King h8, and this is one of the most beautiful finishes you'll see all day. Queen g7 check, sacrificing the queen, and after knight takes, pawn takes, rook takes, pawn takes, and that is checkmate. With the black pieces in this double-sided game, here knight f3 loses to this beautiful tactic. Try to pause the video to solve the problem, black to play and win. Here knight f2 check, king e1, and now knight d3 double check on this king. If you go to f1, I have checkmate, so then the king goes to d1, and you know the rest, queen d1 check, sacrificing the queen, knight takes, and now knight f2, smothered mate. Speaking of smothered mates, Greco also sacrificed his knight here before playing queen h4 and threatening two very, very nasty pawns. After knight f3, we take on f2 check, defended by two pieces, king h1, and now queen g1 check, sacrificing the queen and forcing this knight or rook to take this queen, to which we have the same response, knight f2, smother checkmate. In this other mating net, in which Greco scores 100% accuracy, by the way, e4, b6, which is the Owen's defense, and now d4, bishop b7, bishop d3, f5, we take on f5, and now Greco sacrifices the pawn, which means he does sacrifice the rook indirectly, which is trapped. Now queen h5, though, check on the king, g6, and now f takes g6. And here, Greco has a little trick up his sleeve. Knight f6 attacks the queen, which was threatening a discovered checkmate on the king, but we still play it. g takes h7, check on the king, forcing the knight to take on h5, and now bishop g6, checkmate. Greco had this other mating net that was super interesting and later played again by Bobby Fischer in a professional game. Here after f5 takes takes, g takes, and now we have rook takes f5, sacrificing the rook. And after bishop takes, we have bishop takes f5, and the target h7 is almost impossible to defend against. You can make some air for your king after rook e8, but now we have check, king here, check, king here, and then bishop g5 will at least win the queen here, ggs. Actually, this is mate, I'm just seeing right now, so that's that's uh, that's also possible. In this crazy game, Greco sacks the bishop and then checks, and now the king is on a hunt. With two pieces up, the black pieces just want to survive, where the white pieces have to checkmate or win a queen. And then we bring our pieces into the attack. King e7, check. Here we play e5, we trade more pieces, check, the king goes up, queen e8 tries to trade queens, then rook f6, white is sacrificing all their pieces on this board, king d4, check, b4, king c6, queen c4, check, and now knight a4, checkmate. This checkmate off the Italian opening is really nice. After bishop takes d4, attacking this knight, we not only sacrifice that knight, but we sacrifice this bishop too with bishop g6, brilliant move removing the piece from the square on f7 and threatening checkmate on f7 with the queen d5 defends and blocks this f7 and now we have queen f3 check defends takes and now bishop takes e5 discovered check on the king here forcing either king e8 which would be checkmate or bishop f6 it doesn't matter bishop takes f6 g takes queen takes and the king is forced to e8 and now we have queen f7 checkmate. I love when he just mates his opponent after doing so many great and brilliant moves. Here, Greco sacks the knight after f takes, queen h5 check. Here the king moves and now we take this pawn attacking this queen. Queen moves and here Greco pulls out some brilliance. Bishop e6, check on the king, 
which forces the king to take the bishop. Now this is called an attraction tactic and it forces the king or a piece to go to the square that you want it to go to. And now you have queen e8 check, which really forces the king to either go up or here in this case to block either way. You have to block with one piece here, otherwise it's checkmate. And now we have d5 checkmate. And we would be checkmate if you put any of the three pieces on this square. I just find that so beautiful. In this exactly identical game after g5, Joachino Greco does the same sacrifice, check here. This time the king goes to d8 and now we take on g5. Knight f6, queen h6 to pressure this knight. Black defends very well actually. We, we play f4 to try to open up this f file on this knight and now e takes d4, e5 marching on towards this and here madness is about to happen so close your eyes if you're sensitive to this craziness. This is check, right? Discover check on the king, king h1. Now c takes b2, threatening and trapping the rook with another queen on the board and that's exactly what happens. e takes f6 and now black does another queen while taking a rook. We take this queen back, thank you very much, with check and a fork. The king does not move out because it would be completely over. The knight has to take and now we have queen takes f8 check, right? By taking this queen, we remove the defender of the rook. We weren't trying to take the queen, we were just trying to get the rook for free. And now we take king up and now bishop b5 check. And whatever you put here, a knight or a pawn to block, it's gonna be checkmate on e7. And if you go up, I believe it's still checkmate via f5, king e5, and then we would have bishop f6, king d5, queen f7 check, the king is forced to move, and then queen c4, and this would be more complicated, so we just, uh, we just play this, and then this, and then this, and then this is checkmate. This is the mating net which Greco is known for. Here after d4, pushing for the center, we take bishop b4 check, knight c3, knight f6, threatening this pawn, castles, and they take take, and they win a pawn here. We go rook e1, pressuring this knight. It cannot take c3 because it's pinned, and now d5, rook takes e4, sacrificing the rook, and then after d takes, we have knight g5, threatening everything on f7, and now black castles. But the problem with castles is that black doesn't have that many defenders around this king side, so we have queen h5 here. And now you're threatening mate, and you're tripling the offense on f7. h6 to defend the priority, and now we have knight takes f7, threatening some discovered checks on this king and this queen as well. So the queen has to move first, but now we have check on this king, double check, so you have to move the king. King moves, double check again, so the king always has to move on a double check. That's a rule in chess. King moves, and now queen h8, checkmate. Greco loved to make his opponent's king dance, and after rook takes h5 in this crazy game already, rook takes, queen takes, this is a forced maiden three from here on out. King e7, queen f7 check, forcing the king up, and now queen e5, d5 check, king e7, and queen e5 checkmate. This mate was so off-putting after bishop g5 trapping this queen, knight d7, and now we have knight e5, d5, queen f3, threatening a discovery check. And after bishop f5, we don't get the discovery check, but we get two pieces on this pinned bishop. So g6, and now this opens up h6 for check. King moves to e8, and one of the most satisfying moves you'll see today is bishop f7 checkmate. Greco also sacrificed his knight right here on f4 after takes. We take back with the rook with tempo on this queen, so the queen moves and now we have check on this king. And look at this weird and super weak king side. Here we just have the beautiful kiss of checkmate, queen e4. And you cannot defend against this checkmate on h7. Greco's opponent is very rare. His opponent played this brilliant move, knight g3, going on the pin of this pawn. And after Greco takes, and now queen takes h1, black have won material for the first time ever, I think. Here, his opponent gets greedy. After takes, king takes, queen takes c1. Gioacchino Greco plays knight c6 check here, but discovery of this open file. And now after takes with any piece, queen e8 checkmate. After Greco sacks the rook here on h4, g takes h4, and now knight g6 attacking this rook, his plan is to win this pawn on h5. So 
He's going to annoy this rook as much as possible. Bishop g8 attacking this rook, and now this rook has no more squares because the bishop takes up h6. So rook g7, queen takes h5. Oh no, my bishop. Rook takes g8, and now Greco goes with this knight e5, discover check on the king, king e7, queen f7 check, king and d6 is all forced, and now knight c4. The king is now forced to go to c6, and now queen d5 is checkmate. This is one of the weirder mating nets that he does on his opponent. Greco does check first, and now trades queens, goes into an endgame, very rare for a Greco game, and now plays knight takes d5, sacrificing the knight, brilliant move on the board, c takes, and now it's a cozy checkmate, bishop takes d5, king up to h7, and now knight g5 checkmate. His opponent should have just done knight f7. The same type of sacrifice here reoccurs after rook e1 attacking this queen, queen f7, and now bishop d6 check, king is forced to g8, really not a nice square, and now we have rook e7 attack attacking this queen and placing a rook on the seventh rank. Queen f6 and now knight takes d5, sacrificing the bishop and sacrificing the knight at the same time. Queen takes d6 is not too good because now we have double check on this king with knight and bishop forcing a king move. The king moves to f8 and now we have a rook e8 checkmate. And lastly, for mating nets and mating attacks, here is a game with three brilliant moves by Greco. After his opponent takes on g3, we take back on g3, attacking this queen by discovered attack. Bishop takes f3 is a nice desperado. If takes, you take the queen. So, he does an attraction tactic. Bishop takes f7 check. And if you take back with the king, which does not happen, if you take back with the king, I have queen takes f3 check on the king and then winning the queen. So king d8, and now we take back the bishop. Attacking the queen, queen moves, and now we sack the rook. After rook takes, now we win this exchange, but we fork these two pieces while winning back this knight. And now the rook checks, but we still continuously attack these two pieces. Rook takes c2, nice resource to attack the bishop, but this comes with check on the king. And once the queen blocks, we have bishop g5 check, forcing the king to go here. If you go to c8, it's checkmate. So the king goes to d7, and now we have bishop e3, the third brilliant move of the game. This is a mad, mad thing. If the king takes, we have a free queen with checkmate, imagine that. So the queen needs to take, and now you're in for a ride. Queen d8 check, king c6, and now this runs into a royal fork from a pawn. What an absolute pawn. Queen takes, takes, and now we just mate the king with this absolutely beautiful queen, bishop, and knight checkmate that imprisons the king in the center of the board. And finally, my favorite mating net of his that I saw as a little kid and was really inspired to take up chess. Bishop takes g6 is bad because of bishop takes d4, but if black plays takes back, which did happen in the game, this is even better than you can imagine as a combination. This is the holy grail. Queen takes h8 check, but that's not it. After attracting the queen to h8, we do have a royal fork, but that's really not it. King c7, we do not take this queen. Instead, we absolutely embarrass our opponent with bishop takes f4 check on the king, forcing d6, and now bishop takes d6. The king is forced to d7, and now we have rook e7 checkmate. This game is a little mad too. After queen f6, we have d takes e5. You cannot take back because I have queen takes f7, winning a knight and bishop and etc. So queen g7 and now e6. And now this pawn is pinned, so we are threatening this, and then we're threatening to make a second queen. It's not too good. Knight f6, and this is really crazy. e takes f7 check. King f8, the big mistake, and now we have bishop takes f4 and this is just insanely brilliant if you take my bishop i'm playing queen c5 checkmate and here i'm sacrificing my queen so that if you take my queen i have bishop d6 checkmate mm -hmm.